Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of my Beetlejuice dress using the cosplay by McCall's Night Felt Herbalist. And this is for my Monstrous March project because it is monstrous and it is a monster. If you have not seen part one or my project vlogs for this tutorial, I will leave them linked down below for you so you can check them out before you watch this one. But otherwise, we're just gonna hop right into it since all the information was in the last video. I do have a little slide here that's showing you some of the terms that I'm gonna be using over and over in this one. So that way I'm not repeating myself 30,000 times since we do it 30,000 times. Two of these I have videos on and they're linked down below. For a finished edge, I am pretty much going to be serging, but you can go ahead and do a zigzag stitch. You just want a nice finished edge to keep from fraying. And then for the 5 8 inch hems, because we hem up a lot of stuff, I'm just doing a 3 8 inch fold over, ironing that, and then I'm gonna fold over another 3 8 inches and iron that, and then I will sew it down. So that's basically how I do my hem so that you can see what I mean. But otherwise, let's go ahead and jump back in to part two. Going to the back of the jacket, I'm going to open up the back facing and finish off these raw edges with my serger, but you can do a zigzag stitch. Taking my zipper, I'm going to roll open the coils and iron these open. And this will help make it a little easier to sew on in a minute. So go ahead and do it to both sides all the way down. Taking your open zipper, you're gonna lay the right side down. Take your jacket, open it up so the edge is right side face up, and you're gonna match the raw edges on your right side of your zipper. You want the coils to line up just before that seam allowance. So when you sew it on, you'll be essentially sewing along the seam allowance that we made. And you want the top notch edge to be about a fourth of an inch just below where the fabric meets the back facing. That way we have room for our hook and eye later. So you're just gonna line this up all the way down, pinning it in place. On the opposite side, we're gonna do the same thing. Open up the jacket so that the raw edge lines up with the raw edge of the jacket opening. Line up the coils on the 5 8 inch seam allowance. And to make sure they're starting in the same spot, I'm gonna lay my zipper edges together, sandwich them between the other side of the jacket, matching that edge, and then I will pin it here in place. That way your zipper will sew up evenly. And then pin the side down as well. When you go to sew your zipper on with your zipper foot, make sure that when you get about three or four inches from the bottom that you lift your presser foot, close your zipper, pass the zipper foot, and then you can put your presser foot back down and continue sewing to the bottom end. And I'm gonna stop just about where that notch is at the bottom. Once your zipper is sewn on, I'm gonna even out the edge of the zipper here and iron it down in place so that way the zipper doesn't continue to roll outward. At the top on the back facing, I am gonna also fold it over that 5 8 inch seam allowance and iron this down as well. That little loose top end of your zipper, you're gonna fold inward and then lay the facing back over, wrong side to wrong side, so that way that edge is encased in the middle. And I'm gonna start pinning this facing to the zipper, making sure that the folded edge of my facing is just slightly back from the coils of my zipper. That way it doesn't get caught in the zipper when I go to zip it up. And you're gonna pin this down all the way down on each side. Slip stitch these edges to the zipper tape. Going to the bottom of my zipper, I'm going to fold up the sides of the seam allowance so my zipper is sandwiched in between. And then I will go to the very bottom here where the opening is and I'm gonna do a little back stitch so that way the zipper has a finished edge at the bottom. 
grab a hook and eye and then you will hand sew these on just above the zipper on the inside of your jacket. Taking my sleeve pieces for the fabric and the lining, I'm going to fold these right sides together along those straight short edges and pin them together on all four pieces. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Taking my sleeve ruffle pieces in the fabric, I'm going to also lay these right sides together. So I have two sets of ruffles and I'm going to line up the long straight edge and the short straight edge pinning them together. This is optional. You can go ahead and finish these raw edges first. And then sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. We're going to hem up the bottom edge. So we're first going to fold it up 3 8 inches and iron it down all the way around. And then we will fold it up another 3 8 inches and iron this down all the way around. And this is basically what we're doing every time we're doing that 5 8 inch hem. And then sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. We're going to take the trim and line the bottom edge of each of these sleeves. And I'm going to put it right up against the edge, but you can place yours where you like depending on what kind of trim you're using. When you start your trim, fold it under at least half an inch so that way you have a nice finished edge. And then you want to do the same thing when you end it. And I'm starting and stopping right here on this seam. Sew this on along the edge of each sleeve. Then you're going to take your sleeve ruffle lining pieces and you're going to finish these edges. Sew them together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the same ends. Iron your seams to one side. Then I'm going to finish these bottom edges. I'm going to take my half inch trim and I'm going to place this right sides together with the raw edges on the same side. And I'm going to line this out just about at an eighth to a fourth of an inch above the edge of my sleeve ruffle. Just as close as I can really get it with a little tiny bit of fabric hangover. And then same thing, I want to fold over my edges at the beginning and end. Once it's sewn on, I'm going to turn my lace down so that the seam allowance is now up into the sleeve. And I'm going to sew down the middle of this little tiny seam allowance all the way around. So turn your sleeves right side out and then we're going to grab our fabric sleeve and we will tuck our lace sleeve into the fabric sleeve first matching our seam allowances. And then I will match the top raw edges together all the way around and do this to both of your sleeves. So now we have a layered sleeve. We're going to base stitch these together first and then go ahead and add your gathering base stitches right after. Turn these sleeves inside out. 
and taking your fabric sleeve first, we're gonna match our seam allowances, making sure to match the shorter edge of our sleeve ruffle with the seam allowance, and then start gathering up your sleeve ruffle so that it matches the bottom edge of our sleeve. Once you have the size that you need, distribute your gathers evenly and pin this all in place. Do this to your other sleeve as well. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take your sleeve ruffles and turn them down against your sleeve. Then we will grab our sleeve lining and making sure to match the notches at the top of your sleeve so that you have the correct pieces together. You're gonna tuck your sleeve inside of the lining, matching up that same raw edge at the bottom with the seam allowances first and then matching it all the way around. This is a little bulky, so I'm gonna go ahead and use clips for this. Once you have both sleeves together, then you're gonna sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Pull your lining out. And then you're gonna tuck your lining back inside your sleeve. So you should have your wrong sides together. Then go ahead and match up this top sleeve opening and pin it all together on both sleeves. Base stitch these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking my 1 and 1 4 gathered trim, I'm going to wrap this around where the sleeve meets the sleeve ruffle to hide this seam. And then I'm also going to fold over the ends to have my nice finished edge. Sew this on right down the middle. And then this is optional. I am adding some ribbon down the middle of this just to add some more complementary colors to my sleeve. And I'm gonna sew this ribbon down each side, folding under the ends once again. Go to the large circle that we marked, and this is where we're gonna place our bow and button. Take your ribbon and cut two eight inch pieces I'm going to fold over the top end to just as big as I want my bows to be. And I'm just gonna pin these in place to hold them for now. And we're doing it this way so that we don't have too much bulk in that center spot. And then we're gonna add a button right in the middle. Go ahead and hand sew your ribbon and your button in place. Between the top three dots on our sleeve, go ahead and add your gathering base stitches to each sleeve, starting and stopping at each of the outside dots. Taking my bodice inside out, I'm gonna add my sleeve to the armhole, matching my notches on the armhole to the notches on my sleeve. And I'm gonna first line up that lower seam and then I will start matching up the sides of the sleeve to the armhole. Once I get to the gathering stitches, I will start pulling up the gathers at the top to match that top edge of the armhole. I'm going to distribute my gathers evenly and then I will also pin this in place. Do this to the other sleeve as well. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm now gonna do a 1 4 inch seam allowance away from that 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
cut off the rest of the seam allowance just up to that 1 4 inch seam allowance that we just sewed. And then taking our double fold bias tape, as you can see it's folded in twice, you'll notice that one side is slightly shorter than the other and that shorter side is gonna be on top. The longer side will be on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is open up our bias tape, starting at that lower seam. Make sure you have a little bit of hangover, about half an inch. You're gonna place the center of the bias tape right up against that raw edge. And you're gonna slowly do this all the way around your armhole. So we want that shorter edge on top, so that way as we're sewing, no matter what, the bottom edge will be caught in the stitch. Once you get to the end, make sure to leave about an inch of a hangover. You're gonna fold under about half of it so that you have a nice finished edge and then pin this as well. Do both sleeves and then sew the bias tape on just before that edge. Taking my twill tape, I'm gonna cut two 18 inch pieces. Taking one, I'm gonna fold it in half, matching up the ends. I'm gonna fold my sleeve in half so I can find the middle top edge of my shoulder. And I'm gonna pin my twill tape ends to the edge of the armhole. Go ahead and do a back stitch over that same seam allowance, just back and forth a couple of times to hold it in place. Going back to my trim, I'm going to now add this to the edge of my entire dress. So starting at the back zipper on one side, I'm gonna fold over the edge so I have my nice finished edge and I'm just gonna follow this edge all the way around, lining it all up, sewing it all down the middle. Finish with a folded edge on the other side. Take the right side of the front bodice and lay it right over the left side of the front bodice. Line it out as best you can and then I'll pin this together to hold it in place. And I'm gonna slip stitch this open edge closed. Then I'm gonna take my one and a half inch button and I will place this where the dot is marked. And I will hand sew this on. Going to my skirt front and back pieces, I'm gonna grab two, laying them both wrong side face up. Take your zipper, fold open one edge of the skirt so it's right side face up, and I'm gonna lay my zipper right side face down so that they're right sides together. I'm gonna make sure my coils are lined up on the 5 8 inch seam allowance, and I will pin up the edge. The top of my zipper does match the top of my fabric. Then go to the left side, fold it over, and then you're gonna lay the zipper right sides together on this side. And same thing, line up the top of the zipper with the top edge of the skirt piece and pin this all the way down, making sure your coils are on that 5 8 inch seam allowance. And sew these on, making sure to adjust the pull tab just as before so you can go all the way down the zipper. Pin up the rest of the open edge Sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Sandwich your zipper between your seam allowance at the bottom, and then you're gonna continue sewing up and do a little back stitch right at the bottom just before the end of your zipper. As you can see, that'll give you a nice finished zipper edge. Lay your skirt back right side face up, and we're gonna take our third skirt piece, matching it right sides together, and pinning up the ends then do the same to the other side. So you should have one giant three piece circle. Mm -hmm. 
Sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Do a gathering base stitch along the entire top edge. I'm going to fold my skirt in half starting at the zipper to find the opposite end and I'm going to mark this on the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to match the mark that I made with the zipper to find each side marking these on top and bottom as well. So this way you're making four sections on your skirt. Take your ruffle pieces and opening each piece up, you're going to lay each end right sides together and pinning them up to make one giant circle of four pieces. Sew these seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. We're going to hem up the bottom edge. You should have a double fold like so to make that 5 8 inch hem. And then sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. At the top of our ruffle, we're going to do a gathering base stitch all the way around. And you want to make sure that you stop and start each gathering base stitch on each ruffle piece. So right before each seam. This will make it easier to gather later on. So I'm going to choose a seam. And then I will fold this in half from here to find the other end. Then I will take that mark matching my original seam to find the side seams. And I will mark these as well. Going to my skirt piece again, I'm going to lay this right side out. I'm going to take my ruffle section starting at the back seam on my skirt with the zipper and my first chosen seam on my ruffle and I will match these first also matching raw edges and then I'm just going to go around matching each mark on the sides and the front that I made. We're going to gather up each ruffle section to match each skirt section that it's pinned to. Once your ruffle is the same size as your skirt section, then distribute your gathers and pin it all in place. Do this for all four sections. Sew this on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to go back and finish this edge as well as iron it toward the skirt. Taking my trim once again, I'm going to lay this right in the middle of that seam and I will sew it right down the middle. Also making sure to fold under the ends for a nice finished edge. Moving on to the petticoat pieces, I'm going to lay these two pieces right sides together. I will match the edges and pin them together. On one side, I'm going to stop right at the dots that are marked. Sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and on that one side you're only sewing up to the dots. Iron open these seams. At 
At that top open edge, I'm just gonna continue to iron down that 5 8 inch seam allowance on both sides. Hem up the bottom edge, folding it twice. Sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. Do a gathering base stitch along the top, making sure to start and stop about an inch from that open edge. Taking my tool pieces, I'm gonna start with my larger 32 inch section and I'm gonna match the ends right sides together, pinning them up to make one giant circle. On one of the seams, I'm gonna measure down 10 and a half inches and I'm gonna place a pin here so I know where it's at. And we're gonna sew these seams together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to only sew up to that pin that we marked on the one seam. Do the same thing to your 21 and 10 inch pieces without the 10 inch section. So you're just gonna sew all the seams together like usual on only these two sections. With the open section on our 32 inch circle, we're gonna fold over this open edge to the inside 1 4th inches twice. So we'll make a little 1 4th inch rolled hem. And you're gonna pin this down and you're just gonna keep going all the way down until you pass where that seam starts. Do the same thing to the other side. Sew these down, right down the middle, across the bottom, and back up the other side. So here's a picture from the pattern, just for reference. Do a gathering base stitch along the top edge, making sure to start and stop at each section. You're also gonna do this with your other smaller tool sections. Fold up the bottom edge, one and one fourth inches. and we're gonna sew this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. So you can see we have this giant hemmed edge now. So we're gonna sew that top edge down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance all the way around. We're also gonna do this with our other two sections. On our petticoat lining piece, Match your seams together to find the side seams. And I'm gonna mark this on each placement line and on the bottom. Taking our shorter number 10 inch tool section, we're gonna start one seam with the back seam, matching them together. And here I'm doing it opposite so that the seam is hidden, but honestly, you can just place it right on so the seam is outward, because once I got to the top, it didn't matter, and I think this took away some of the length. So you don't have to do this how I'm doing it here, just place it right on so that your wrong sides are together. Go ahead and match each seam on your tool section with each seam and mark that you made on your petticoat. Once again, you're going to gather up each section of the tool to match each section on the petticoat. Distribute your gathers evenly and pin it all in place. Sew this on, matching the seam of your tool to the placement line. Do the same exact thing to your 21 inch section along that middle placement line. Same thing, you can sew this right on. Then taking my 32 inch section, I'm first gonna start lining up the open end on the petticoat with the open end on the tool, making sure that it's wrong sides together. I'm gonna match my seam allowance to the placement line, and I'm gonna match the edge of my tool just right on top of that folded edge of the petticoat. And then from here, it's like the other two. You're gonna match up the marks and the seams, do your gathers, and then we're gonna sew this on along that placement line as well. Make sure to stop and start a half inch from the opening edge. 
of that zipper opening. Going to the waistband, I'm going to add my inner facing and iron it on. Then on the side of the waistband with the dots, we're gonna do the opposite side and hem this up 5 8 inches. So I'm just gonna fold it up 5 8 inches and iron it down all the way across. Cut off half of this seam allowance. Going back to my skirt piece, I'm gonna find the center front and I'm gonna match the center front of my waistband matching the raw edges with right sides together. Then I'm gonna take my right side end and match the center back mark with the folded edge of the zipper. That middle dot I'm gonna match with my right side mark. Then I'll go to my left side mark and match that with my left side dot. And on the left back side, I'm gonna match the center back mark with the folded edge of the zipper. And this side will be a little longer than the other. Like usual, we will gather up the skirt to match the section of the waistband, distribute your gathers, pin it in place, do this for all four sections. Base stitch this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Turn your skirt inside out with the waistband tucked inside. Take your petticoat with the tool on the inside. Tuck your skirt inside of your petticoat. Match up the back zipper openings. Match the center front. And then match the sides. Gather the petticoat to match the section of the skirt. Pin it together. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Sew another 1 4 inch seam allowance away from that 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna cut off the seam allowance to just right before that 1 4 inch seam allowance we just sewed all the way around. Open up the waistband and iron the seam allowance toward the waistband. Taking my twill tape once again, I'm going to cut two more 18 inch pieces. Take one, fold it in half like before, and find your side seam, and we're going to pin this with raw edges together on both sides. Sew these on, doing a back stitch just over that 5 8 inch seam allowance. Move them down out of the way. Turn your waistband down so that it's right sides together, matching those folded edges. Pin the end. And then do the same to the other side. Sew straight up from the edge on your shorter side, and then sew straight up about an inch from the edge on your longer side. Cut off the seam allowance, leaving about a fourth of a seam. And then we'll turn this waistband right side out. You can use something pointy to point out that point. and then line up the edge with that 5 8 inch seam allowance and start pinning it down all the way around. You wanna turn out the other side as well. Slip stitch this waistband closed then going to the zipper opening, I'm once again gonna line up the lining just slightly back from the coils and pin this in place all the way down on both sides.
Slip stitch this to the zipper tape as well. I'm now going to add my hook and bar. I will be adding my hook to the right side of my skirt or the longer side on the inside of the waistband and I will be adding my bar on the left side on the outside of my waistband making sure to line up the bar with that hook placement. And then comes the fun part, going to the bodice. You can go ahead and add your gems. I'm going to be using E6000 glue to glue these on, but you can do this however you like if you choose to do it. And I'm just going to sporadically add gems to my center bodice of my jacket. And this tutorial is complete. I finally have done this monster smarch project and it is beautiful. The sleeves are definitely my favorite detail of this entire costume. With all the different textures and layers, it really makes it special. As much as there was a lot, I didn't find anything too difficult to do, but I definitely would need to know a lot of techniques in order to do this pattern. So I am happy that the new techniques that I did learn, like the boning, was definitely easy to accomplish and figure out for myself since I had never done that before. But but this is my interpretation of a Beetlejuice dress, and I really enjoyed making this costume. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that it was fun to watch from complete beginning to end if you watched my project vlogs and if you liked everything you saw then go ahead and subscribe and make sure that you turn on the bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video I try to have a video every Wednesday and my cross stitch videos are every first Saturday of the month but I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope that I get to see you all in the next one bye